In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a form with Elementor in which you need to fill out all of the fields to activate the submit button. There are five fields on this form and I filled out four of them. And at the moment, the submit button is disabled. It's not clickable. But once I check the acceptance box, which is the last field on this form, I activate the button and I can click it and submit the form. So that's what we're going to create today. I'm going to start with a brand new page. I'm going to add a new container. I'm going to make it direction row. I'm going to go to justify content, align it to the center. I'm going to go to the widgets tab. I'm going to grab another container and drop it into this container. I'm going to set the column width to full width and to width. I'm going to make sure that it's set to percentage and I'm going to give it 40%. Next, I'm going to go to the widgets tab. I'm going to grab the element of form and I'm going to drop it to this container. And we're going to use Elementor's default fields for this example. Now we're going to go to the widgets tab and we're going to grab an HTML widget and we're going to drop it just beneath our form. Next, we're going to go get the code from our famous code page and where it says fill out fields to activate button, you're going to see that we have two versions, the faded one that you saw in the beginning, this one over here, and a gray one that we're going to use right now. So I'm going to click to copy, we're going to go back and we're going to paste the code. Next, I'm going to select the form widget, I'm going to go to advanced and I'm going to name the CSS class form X. Okay. Now, I want to go over how the code functions. The most important thing you should know is that only required fields will activate the submit button. Okay, so for example, if we're going to go to content, name, and we're going to turn on the required toggle, then I'm going to update and preview. You're going to see that filling out only the name field will activate the submit button. And that's because he's the only one we've set as required. So if we're going to go back and set the email to required as well, update and preview, you're going to see that now I have to complete both fields in order to activate the submit button. Okay, so I think you get the idea of how it works. Now, not having all fields as required is good for forms that have fields for a second phone or address. So just set those as optional and make sure the important fields are required. Now, if we're going to go back to our form, and I want to show you that you can add as many fields as you want, you don't need to give them IDs and it's going to work. The code is very flexible. You can even remain with only one field, let's say the email, and make it a single line form. We're going to go to column width, set it to 75. We're going to turn off the label. We're going to go to buttons, column width, 25. We go to the widgets tab, we're going to grab a heading widget, we're going to drop it above our form, we're going to change the text to join our newsletter, we're going to update and preview. And as you can see, the button is disabled, and when I start typing, it becomes active, and I can click and send it. So that's it for this one. You're going to find the link in the description to the page with the code. And if you're going to use this code in one of your forms, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'm going to see you in the next one. Peace.